Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn with Blue Sky Bio, and I'm going to show in this video how to map the mandibular canal and also how to evaluate for an anterior loop in Blue Sky Plan. So as you can see, this is an edentulous case, and so far I've not done anything except for open up the, the DICOMs of this case. And the first thing I'll always do in every case is set my panoramic curve. And so I want this curve to be following the jaw that I'm working on. If it's not, you could grab those nodes and move them where they're just centered over the jaw so that I can see that jaw clearly in the panoramic window. If I'm doing mandibular implants, then the next thing I would do is map that nerve. Uh, obviously very important not to hit that. So I'm going to show you two methods here. One is the automatic detect nerve function, and then the other is the manual. Now with the detect nerve function, what we're going to do is that we're going to actually find the mental foramen up here in the cross-sectional window, and then we'll click inside of that and the software does it all. So before you start mapping a nerve, just click in the panoramic window on your mental foramen and see if you can see it up here in the cross-section. I can see this very easily and so now I can go up to the plus nerve button as you see it says add nerve when you hover over it click that button and now the software is going to be ready to map a nerve now it's ready to do the manual nerve uh, mapping function that's why there is a crosshairs on the the mouse right now in this case I want to do the auto function so I want to click on the button right above that that says detect nerve so click detect nerve the software gives me a picture that says click inside the mental foramen. It's not asking you to click right here. It's asking you to go over to your cross section and click in that same kind of position right inside the mental foramen. So I've done that. It's ready to map. So I come over, click inside the mental foramen, and it does it. And generally, again, this does a nice job. That looks like it's following nicely. It's coming right out the mental foramen. Um, it'll always do something a little bit wonky when it gets to the end of the, the cone beam data because it doesn't know where to map. But for the part that matters, which is inside the mandible, it's done a nice job. Now, what if that doesn't work? Well, then we could come back and we could do the manual uh, nerve stitching. So I'll do that. Let's delete this nerve. And, and before I do, I'll make note here. If you want to change color, you can do that here. Click on the color swatch, make it whatever color you want. If you wanted to change the diameter of the nerve, then you could highlight this number, change it. If you want to lock the nerve, you can do that. Um, when it's not locked, you'll notice these nodes are apparent. If I can grab any of those nodes, that allows me to manually reposition. So if I didn't like something about how the nerve mapped, I could manually reposition that. Okay, so let's delete that nerve and let's instead do this case now the manual way. So when I'm going to do the manual way, I want to click on this button right here that says switch between the slice and the composite view. Now, what is that? Well, what you're looking right here at right here is the composite view of the panoramic window. That means it is a composite view of all of the slices that fall in between this inner yellow boundary of the panoramic curve and this outer yellow boundary. So it's stacking all those together. Um, thus, it looks more like a 2D image, like a traditional pan. In our case, we're going to uh, click this button and turn that off. And now this changed to slice view. And now you see that it's no longer a panoramic uh, trough. It's a panoramic slice. So now you're seeing just a single slice through the mandible. Now, why did I do that? Because we're going to now manipulate this and we're going to use these nodes and position them such that we can track that. Uh, nerve through a single slice from its beginning to end. What do I mean by that? Grab your most distal node, go medial or lateral with it, just play with this until you see that nerve canal come into view. Did you notice just then this came into view? Okay, once it comes into view, grab the next one and go medial or lateral until you see that nerve come into view. So here I go a little bit more medial and now I get a bunch more of this nerve coming into view. And I could now grab the next one, medial, lateral, until that all comes into view. And sometimes the spacing of these nodes is such that you might want to move one or two back or forward to track along that a little bit better. So you see I've got it all the way from here to here, but then there's this little tiny spot where it's not completely tracking. And that's as it's curving outward right there. Now we have this uh, visible from beginning to end 
we can see the whole nerve canal throughout its uh, entire extent through the mandible. Once I have that, now I'm ready to uh, map the nerve. So you may still have the panel open or you might just go up here and click plus nerve again. It will bring this panel open and it's ready now if you click that to begin mapping. So there's a plus N on my mouse. I'm going to start at the very distal and I'm going to just single click inside the canal. Move it up, click a little uh, forward of that and just keep clicking your way down the canal. And now as you approach this mental foramen area, slow down and begin watching up here in your cross section because when this appears in the cross section, I want to quit clicking in this window and now switch up here and click my way out of the foramen. So as you can see here, it's visible. There's the foramen. So I'm going to click one more time in the mouth of the foramen and then one more time out in space and make this one a double click because that will end the nerve mapping. If you don't do that, then it's still going to be active and it's going to be ready to map another point. And so, you know, you would click here on the screen and now it would map another point. And now you've got a nerve going halfway through their palate or whatever. So if you forget to double click to end it, just come over here and deactivate this edit nerve button. OK, it shouldn't be highlighted blue. It should just be grayed out like the rest of these. Now, the nerve is not locked yet because you can see here, I still have the nodes present. It just turns off the mapping function. If you wanted to lock it, then that would be right here, clicking this checkbox that has the padlock. So I can look at this and I can evaluate. Do I like the way this is mapped? Do I want to grab a node and position this? But the beauty of doing what I've just shown is that by default, if you lined everything up where it passes straight through the, the canal, you know it's right. There's no way that it could be off. So I like this. I'm going to go up here and lock this. And now that, connect, that uh, nerve is done. So let me repeat this process on the other one and then we'll evaluate for an anterior loop. So I go over here and I'm going to grab the node and I go medial or lateral, whichever I need to, till I see the nerve canal come into view. I just saw it come into view right there. So now I grab the next one. And more still comes into view. And sometimes I might need to go back and, and do the distal one a little bit of a tweak just to make sure it's got the largest uh, view of the canal present. And looks like that last one that I did right here, that completed this because here is the mental foramen. If you were questioning that, you could just click on your screen and look, there it is. So now I've got the nerve visible uh, from beginning to end and I can come back up here and say add nerve. Click your way down the canal. Stay in the canal and as you approach this mental foramen area, slow down, there it is. I'm going to do it wrong this time. I'm going to do the, the way that I told you not to do, which is if you do this uh, point in the mental foramen and then one more out in space and you don't double click it, now the nerve is still trying to map. So the next place I click, well, it's trying to map points. And as you can see, it's carried this nerve way over into the middle of the, the floor of the mouth. Back arrow, undo that one. And again, it's still ready to map. How do I deactivate this? You need to come over and deactivate the blue button. And now it's done mapping. And if you need to tweak any points, you can. If not, you can lock this nerve. So finally, let's evaluate for an anterior loop. The only really solid window I know how to evaluate for an anterior loop is this one. This is your axial slice. Okay, so I'm going to maximize that. Zoom in here. And at this point, you might want to turn off these projections. This button right here that has the multicolored um, uh, panoramic curve projection, that's your all projections button. It just turns off all those visual projections. Let's turn that off just for a moment. And I'm also going to unlock my nerves because if there is a, uh, an anterior loop, I'll need to reposition these nodes slightly. So what I want to do is scroll up and down through the level of that mental foramen and evaluate. Does the uh, canal go forward of where I stopped it? Okay, so let's evaluate this one first. As I go up and down, is that nerve canal going more anteriorly? And I say it is not. Maybe right here, just a slight pull forward would be helpful. 
but there's not much of an anterior loop there. Let's go over to this one. Is there an anterior loop on this one? Well, to me, it does look like this one goes a little bit more forward and then swoops back. So I could grab this node, pull it slightly more forward, and then you can see it, it will uh, go backwards and it will exit out the mandible. All right, now it should be clarified. There's one more thing to look for, and that is when I get down to the level, okay, there's the mental frame and I'm going deeper. I'm going deeper still. And now what is this thing? Okay, we're at the bottom most extent of where that nerve swooped down to. And now if I keep going down, look, do you see this coming off here? What is that? And so a lot of people will get confused and think that that is an anterior loop. That is not an anterior loop. This is way too far to be an anterior loop. Rather, this is the incisive canal. And I can verify that by the fact that if I keep going deeper and deeper, it never comes back your mandibular canal is going to at some point come back even if it has an anterior loop it will come back and it will exit out whereas the incisive canal it's going to branch off right here at about the deepest point at the anterior most extent of the mandibular canal and then it dives and goes a little bit deeper still which is why as i keep going more and more inferiorly i can see this and it's still tracking forward that will eventually come up here and anastomose with, um, you know, your sublingual arteries and things like that, which are entering right in here. So same thing over here. Let's evaluate for an anterior loop. Nothing present. Let's keep going deeper. Oops, going the wrong way. Here we're at the deepest part. Let's keep going deeper. And here it shoots off. It's fairly distinct in this patient, but nothing ever comes back. So that gives me a lot of confidence that that is simply the incisive branch, which I'm not near as concerned about. Um, it's only supplying blood and nerve supply to the anterior teeth. There's nothing up here that I can worry about giving the patient, uh, you know, uh, a numb lip or anything like that. So that completes this tutorial, but hopefully that uh, gives you a little bit more efficient way of mapping nerves and uh, helps you evaluate for those anterior loops.